Sabina Leonelli. I'm a professor of philosophy and history of science at the University of Exeter in the UK, where I also co-direct the Exeter Centre for the Study of the Life Sciences. Since a few years, I've been investigating what researchers mean by data, and I've done it by studying not only how data are talked about, but how they're actually used. So I've used an empirical approach to philosophy, which is called the philosophy of science in practice. Data are often understood to be some sort of neutral, objective fact that researchers collect from the world and then use as evidence for their work. Understanding data as facts, however, does not help to understand the nature of scientific research. If data are facts, why do researchers often argue about their meaning? And why are there such big disagreements around what counts as good data? We have seen many such controversies play out in the context of the current coronavirus pandemic. On the one hand, data are said to be everywhere, and there are lots of promises around what big data could deliver to help the pandemic response. On the other hand, however, there is very little clarity in public discourse on how such data should be modeled and understood, and there have been many missed opportunities to involve relevant public, such as patient groups and frontline medical workers, into the collection and interpretation of pandemic data. In my philosophical work, I proposed a solution to this problem, which involves a total rethink of what data are and how they function as evidence for research claims. I propose to think of data as relational objects, not neutral facts, but rather research components which need to be contextualized in order to have any meaning, and thus in order to function as evidence. This relational view of data helps us to understand the role of conceptual commitments, social settings and material environments in determining what counts as data and how data can be used. A key lesson is that human agency and judgment are crucial components of data interpretation. Far from being a data-driven activity, the analysis of large data sets remains a human-centered process, and we need many different perspectives and forms of expertise to contextualize data adequately, especially the kind of complex heterogeneous data that we have in the pandemic. Recognizing this is fundamental to support responsible and reliable data interpretation in any field. And in turn, it's also fundamental to fostering good research practices around the globe and produce knowledge that we can trust and can help us tackle the profound social and environmental challenges of our age. This research highlights how philosophical work, in collaboration with scientists and historians, can illuminate what we actually mean by the term data and how scientists use it. One key unresolved issue, given this contextual understanding of data, is how to monitor for the quality and reliability of data practices. This is particularly tricky for research that is happening under secrecy, so-called closed research where, due to commercial, ethical or security concerns, researchers handle and interpret data without disclosing their methods and without making their choices available for external scrutiny. How to evaluate and monitor these kinds of closed research practices is a big challenge for the future, and one I hope myself and my colleagues in the philosophy, history and social studies of science will contribute to solve.